Welcome to part three of lecture three of fluff body aerodynamics. So we're going to focus on the RANS or URANS approach that uh, I introduced because this is the still the most industrially relevant approach. By far, this is the most common way that people do CFD in industry today, and this is likely to be true for quite some time, probably at least the next decade. When we do this kind of thing, we end up modifying our governing equations and we get additional terms in the momentum equations what we call turbulent shear stresses. These aren't real shear stresses but they're additional shear stresses that uh, in an average sense seem to act on the flow and they're the effect that the turbulence has. So to figure out what those are we have to have some additional modeling equations So when we uh, use these RANS equations, basically we need turbulence models to figure out what those turbulent shear stresses will be. The mathematical details of how this is derived are in the textbook, um, but here I'm just going to focus on the conceptual approach. So basically what we're going to do is we can imagine we've got our flow and it's got all kinds of random fluctuations in time due to turbulence effects, and we could always take that flow and we could separate it into a time average part and a varying part and assume that the varying part is entirely due to the turbulent fluctuations. So here we see the average velocity and then the fluctuations on top of that. Um, and this is showing sort of the square of the fluctuations, which of course are always constant. Now don't be alarmed by the equations here. All I want to do is draw to your attention what we've added. When we split the flow field into the average plus the fluctuating part. When we consider the equations for the, the average part, we get the following. Everything uh, here looks just like the Navier-Stokes equations that we derived recently uh, in the last lecture, except this last term, which I've highlighted with the red box. These are terms that it have to do with the products of the fluctuating velocities, either the sort of products of themselves or sort of products of different components of these fluctuating velocity components. And this is the terms, you know, these are the terms that we have to model with our, or essentially estimate with our turbulence model. So even though the fluctuating components by definition have average values of zero, that's not the case for the averages of their products. So you can see why this is by considering a really simple example. If we consider the fluctuation to just be, say, a cosine function, um, you can visually show that the average of, let's say, the cosine of t is, is zero, but the average of cosine squared t is not zero. So here's what that looks like. So the black solid curve is, of course, cos of t, uh, or cos of x in this case, and the dashed black line is the average of that, which, of course, is zero. Then the red curve is cosine squared. And this is never becomes negative, obviously, because it's a something squared. Um, and so the average value of that is actually 0.5. So the average of the product is not equal to the product of the averages. So those terms that we've added to the equations are non-zero. If we have a look at the left-hand side of those RANS equations, we saw these terms that I've highlighted in red here, the DDT terms. But wait a minute, we were just talking about the time average of the velocity, so how can there still be time derivatives? Shouldn't uh, du bar dt by definition be zero? Well, this is a little bit of a hand-waving trick. Um, unsteady RANS is widely used, but is a little bit questionable in terms of what you're really doing. Um, you can do time resolve calculations because formally the time varying part that we separated into the uh, u prime or fluctuating component parts is the random stochastic variations, those due to turbulence. Deterministic unsteadiness due to say varying boundary conditions or um, large separations that are controlled by the geometry, th those are still allowed and so there can be uh, time variations in the average velocity. Another way to think about this is that you might, you're kind of splitting the time scales and that there can be variations in u bar, but they're much slower than the fast random variations in u prime. 
So we're sort of can account for these slower variations without uh, having to worry about the fast, small variations due to the turbulence. So in RANS, the new terms capture the effect of the turbulence on the flow. Um, basically, they capture additional momentum exchange due to turbulent mixing. The effect is exactly the same as increasing the viscosity of the fluid, except that here this extra turbulent viscosity isn't a constant like the, the viscosity of the fluid. It's something that varies throughout the flow field. Also, this turbulent viscosity actually tends to be dominant over the, the fluid viscosity itself. It tends to be about an order of magnitude or more bigger than the molecular viscosity. 